Greetings and welcome, my name is Aaron Craig with Be Honest Games, and in this video we're going to be going over the data structure called Stacks. Now, stacks are a very useful data structure that's actually used all around you all the time, and there's also some very real-world examples that I'm going to get to. Now, they are what's called a last-in, first-out data structure called LIFO, and what you can think of a stack as is basically your dishes in your sink or a pile of papers. To get to something on the bottom or just that's not on the top, you've got to go through everything above it. So if you've got your favorite plate on the bottom of your dish stack that maybe has a picture of Guardians of the Galaxy or something on it, to get to it, you've got to take care of all of the dishes that are on top of it. Now, maybe in real life, you can actually reach under and grab it, but in the data structure stack, you can't. If there is something on top, you've got to do what's called popping that off, which is literally taking the thing off of the stack, to get to anything underneath of it. And to add things to the stack, you would push a new item onto the stack. And if we go to the help menu, we can actually look and see that that's the exact same terminology that Game Maker Studio uses, because it's industry-wide terminology. If you want to learn data structures, you've also got to learn the syntax and the words that are a part of talking about data structures. So you've got DS stack pop, which is taking something off of the stack, like doing a dish, and DS stack push, which you would add dishes to after a meal or something. All these other functions are also fairly clear. You've got create, destroy, clear it. This DS stack empty is to check if it's empty, which we'll actually use here. You can get the size, you can copy it to a new one. This top one right here, this is actually what's called peaking. This is looking at the top item on the stack, but it will not remove it from the stack. So if you're talking about this, most of the time it's called peaking, but for whatever reason they called it top, because I guess it makes more sense if you're not familiar with data structures. Reading and writing is all about uh, saving a DS stack to something else and then writing it and reading it back in so that you have it the exact same way it was. So a stack is actually really useful. And something that you use all the time that's probably implemented with a stack is control Z. If you think about it, how does a program know the very last thing you did and be able to go back in order for everything you've done? It's because it's pushing every single command, every key press, every uh, bolden onto a stack. And if you control Z, it can just pop that right off and it will undo that command. And Game Maker Studio has that as well. If we make a new object, call it obj guard, and we add an event, we can add a create event, and we'll add a step event, because we're actually gonna use these. Each one of these events probably has their own stack associated with it, because you can control Z individual events. So if I delete this, and then I type something in here, and I delete this first line and type hello, I can then come in here and press control Z, and it will undo that in here without affecting anything in here. I can control Z that and control Z that back on there as well. Now there's more ways than just doing it with a stack, but it, a stack is a really functional data structure that is probably used all around you all the time, but you don't think about it and you don't notice it. So what we're gonna do is code a simple guard that is going to walk around the level by using a stack and pushing new instructions onto him. And every time he pops it, he's going to then do that new instruction that just came off it. So let's go ahead and jump in. And I've got a sprite right here. And this is just a blank white box, nothing fancy. But we're gonna assign that sprite to the guard. And now inside of the create event, all we need to do is create the stack, which is a function that they've got called DS stack create. And you don't actually need to do anything more than that to make a stack. Uh, a stack is something that is going to grow on its own. So if you add a new item onto it and it's full, it will dynamically re reallocate the memory it needs to make it larger. 
In other programming languages, you might have to manually allocate that memory and make sure that it's not going to overflow, but GameMaker Studio does that for you. Now it returns the stack we make, so let's make sure that we catch that stack. So that's going to be my stack. We'll just call it a variable called my stack right there. Now we're going to have this guard walk around the room. And to do that, we need to also have uh, him have a goal. Now I'm going to show you why we need this in a little bit. But let's go ahead and type this in here. And let's just put in goal equals undefined. So he's going to have a goal that he's going to move towards. And we're going to use this to make sure that we can have him going around where we want him to. Now inside of the step event, there's actually a little bit of code to do in here, but to push and to pop things onto the stack, well, we need to have something to do that. And right now, we don't have anything. So let's make a script. I'm gonna call this um, move random. And this is just gonna move the guard around the room. The way we're gonna do this is by getting a couple of random coordinates, X and Y, and then we're gonna set those when this script is called and move whichever object is calling it, which is gonna be the guard. So I'm gonna say random X equals I random, so an integer random between zero and room width. Random Y will be I random room height and then we'll give them a random speed as well between zero and five. So hopefully we don't get zero, otherwise he'll just be standing still. Now we also want to call the function move towards point. And this is gonna be random x, random y, and random speed. So with that, whenever the script is called, it's going to choose a random spot inside of our room and then start having the guard move towards that point. And that's what this script is. And you can imagine that if you had a guard, you could have much more sophisticated scripts in here that said, uh, patrol this house or search for this enemy or chase an escaped villain or something like that. You could have these scripts that are the AI for your guard, for your enemy, whatever it is, and then you can push them onto the guard stack so that if he is currently patrolling the room and all of a sudden uh, an, an enemy shows up or the player appears, you can push a new thing onto that stack for them to do. So let's look at how that actually works and the functionality of the stack. So we're gonna do this with keyboard presses. So we're gonna do, keyboard check of A, and that's gonna be adding to the stack, is how that's gonna work. So we're gonna, if we press A, we're gonna add to the stack, and the way we add is by pushing onto it. So we push it onto the stack. We need to say which stack it's going on, which is the ID right there, and it's called my stack, because we already made that. And then we've got the script that we wanna put on there, and that's gonna be move random. Now, this is important. We want to put the script move random in here. We don't want to actually invoke that script. So don't put in the parentheses right behind it. Instead, just pass in the script. This is a really neat thing that you can do in any data structure or even in variables. You can have them store scripts and they won't activate until you use the function script activate with this, which is what we're gonna do. So we're checking A. Now we want to check if keyboard check pressed ORD R for remove. So if we are removing this, what we want to do is DS stack pop. And all we have to do is pass in whichever stack we're popping it off. Now, when we pop something off, we actually get whatever we popped off of the stack, which means that we need to catch it. So that means that our goal up here that we created originally is what we want to save this as. So our goal is actually going to end up equaling the script that we set here. Now, the reason that we're doing that 
is we need to come down here so that we actually have a way of stopping our guard. And we're going to do an if statement that just says if goal doesn't equal undefined. And that's simply because if we tried to check uh, the distance, that uh, the, the, the location that the guard is moving to, and we did that before we pop anything off the stack, we'll actually end up getting an error. Because one of the really cool things about calling this script is we are actually creating these variables inside of our player as soon as we call them, which means that we can access them and check to see if we're close to it by using the function distance to point. So if the distance to point of random x and random y, and this needs to be, if it's less than five, then we're gonna set our internal speed equal to zero. So random speed is not the variable we wanna set, and that's because move towards point actually sets the speed of the player. Random speed is just setting that speed originally. So what we've got here is a way to push things onto the stack, pop them off, save whatever we popped off, and then check if we're close to the place that we are supposed to be going towards. So with all of this right here, we are just about ready to actually start doing it. Now you may have noticed that we're saving what we pull from the stack inside of our goal. The very last thing we need to do is use the function script execute and then we're going to execute that goal because the goal is actually the script that we just pulled off. So now if we go into our room, we place our guard right there and we run it, we're going to be able to press A to add something onto it. So I'll press A several times and I'll press R once and you can see that he moves, which not very far because he didn't pick a distance very far away, but there now he's moving. So we are adding a functionality to our guard with a stack that every time we pop something off of there, he's then doing it. So I can press A a couple more times, press R, and he'll pick a new location with a new speed to go to. Now, if we actually press F6 and run this, we can look at the debugger and see exactly how it's handling that. So inside of our debugger, if we open up our guard, we can turn on global variables here, and I'll bring this up and I'll press A once, twice, three times. And you can see here that nothing happens. And that's because we need to actually pause the game and view as a DS stack. So because it's a data structure, it doesn't automatically know to view it as that specific data structure. So we have to tell it to. But now all of a sudden we can tell it and we can view what's on there. Now this is really cool. And the reason it says zero is because the script resource that we're passing in is actually script resource zero since there's only one in there. But now if I press play and then I press R, you'll be able to see that now my stack has actually only a size of two. So if I press A again, I can add a lot more onto it. And then I can press R and I can remove them as it uses them up. So this is a really great way of doing some simple AI, but also showing you that a stack works just like this. You add things to it, and then you remove things from it. So if you have a guard that has a patrol, and you want them to continue patrolling after you know they're all done, then you can push a new thing onto the stack, and then as soon as they're done with that, you take that off, and, they keep, and then they do the thing that was underneath it originally. So this is a great way to do some simple rudimentary AI, but stacks are also very useful and the terminology for a stack carries over to a lot of other things like pushing and popping. Those are things you'll hear if you ever start studying data structures. So hopefully that helps and hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, feel free to shout out down below and I'll do my best to clarify anything that doesn't make sense. Thank you very much for joining me. As always, have fun making great games, and I will talk to you later.